What do you think would happen if I were to put this lid on this glass jar, flip it over and let go? The lid falls because of gravity. Now watch what happens when I add water to the jar and how this changes our results. Now the lid stays. You can even take the lid off of the jar and the water stays inside as well. We're gonna talk about two properties of water today called cohesion and adhesion. Stay tuned so you can find out how these two properties relate to why the water was able to stay inside this jar. In this video, I'm gonna be showing you six different activities that you can do to investigate the properties of cohesion and adhesion. For the first activity, you're going to need a glass or a cup, water, paper clips, and food coloring. Take a look at this glass of water. I filled it as high as I possibly could. Look at the top of the glass and see if you notice anything unusual. You should be able to see that the water looks like it's higher than the top of the glass. How is that possible? In this activity, we're actually gonna be adding paper clips to this glass of water to see how many paper clips can we fit into this glass of water that looks like it's already as full as it can get. Let's try it together. The water is slightly running out of the glass on the side over here. So I got 15 paper clips in my glass of water that already looks like it was full. I want you to try this and see how many paper clips you can get in your glass of water. Think about some reasons why your answer might be different than mine. For activity number two, you'll need a penny and some sort of dropper. A pipette works really well, but if you don't have one of those handy, I just took a food coloring container and emptied it out and filled it with water. Before you begin, make sure that you wash your penny off really well. In this activity, we're gonna be trying to see how many drops of water we can fit on the penny before it overflows. Make a prediction before we get started how many drops you think I'm gonna be able to fit on this penny. Now you're just gonna take your dropper and drop one at a time drops on top of the penny. Make sure you're counting as you go. I want you guys to notice how the water forms this dome shape on top of the penny. The water is trying to stick together. I was able to get 11 drops on my penny. I want you guys to try this and see if your answer matches mine. And again, think of some reasons why your answer might be different than mine. In science, we call these sources of error. For activity number three, you'll need dish soap, paper clips, a toothpick, a paper towel cut into small squares about this size, and a cup or glass of water. Your challenge in this activity is to get a paper clip to float on top of the glass of water. So you'll notice when you try, it's not an easy task. Paper clips are actually 
more dense than water, which means it should sink, but it is possible to get them to sit on top of the water. Here's a little trick that can help you to get the paper clip to float. You'll take one of your squares of paper towel and very, very lightly place it on top of the water. Then take your paper clip and also gently place it on top of the paper towel. You'll notice the paper towel will sink, but the paper clip will remain on top of the water. Take your toothpick and touch the water near the paper clip. You'll notice that nothing happens. Now take your toothpick and put the tip of it in some of your dish soap. Now touch next to the paper clip in the water. The paper clip moves away and sinks immediately. I love this activity. Let's watch it again from a different angle. The paper cup's already floating on the water. Now I'm gonna add the dish soap. Let's take a minute to talk about the science behind the activities that we just did. All three of these activities display a property of water called cohesion. Cohesion is the attraction between water molecules. This is water sticking to water. Water loves to stick together. So when you saw that dome that formed on the penny and in the glass of water before it overflowed, that's because water was trying really, really hard to stay inside the glass and to stick together. This is what causes water to form raindrops and droplets. In the third activity, we were able to see the property of cohesion a little bit further in something called surface tension. Surface tension is the stronger attraction of water molecules at the surface of water. Water molecules in the middle of a glass of water have other water molecules all around them that they can form bonds with. The water molecules at the surface of the glass of water are next to air. So they form stronger bonds with the water surrounding them because they don't have anything to bond with above them. These bonds are extra strong at the surface which creates this barrier or almost film at the surface of water. This makes it harder to break through the surface of water than it is to move through water once you're completely submerged. In activity number three, we saw this when we rested a paper clip on water. We used the dish soap, which is a surfactant, and it can break those bonds and break the surface tension at the top of water, and it allowed the paper clip to fall to the bottom. There are many organisms in nature that use this property of surface tension to their advantage. There's something called the water strider, which is an insect that can walk on water. There's even a lizard that can also walk on water. For activity number four, you'll need two cups or glasses, scissors, tape, and string. Any type of string that absorbs water will work. To set this activity up, you'll take one of your glasses, you'll need to cut a piece of string to about this length, tape one end of your string to the bottom of one of your glasses. Place your string that's been taped to the bottom of the glass inside the glass. Now fill that glass with water and let that string soak in the water for a few minutes. Now, empty that water back out after it's been soaking. And fill your empty glass of water with no string. Now, I've added food coloring to the water just so you guys can see this experiment a little bit better through the video but you don't have to do that when you do this on your own. It's an optional material. Our goal with this activity is to transport the water from here to this glass here. Now, if I pour the water from here, it's gonna go straight down. So let's try using the string to help us. Take the end of the string that's not taped to the glass and put it into the glass with water. Use your finger to hold the string in the glass. 
Now you're gonna pour the water gently. And you'll notice if you don't pour slowly enough, you'll lose a little bit. But take a look at our second glass and you'll see that it's slowly filling up. For activity number five, you'll need seven clear glasses, food coloring, specifically red, blue, and yellow food coloring, and paper towels. To set this experiment up, you're gonna take your paper towel, one piece, and fold it into this shape here, and then fold it in half. You'll need six of these folded paper towels. Next, you're gonna fill every other glass with water. Start with the glass on the end, skip the next glass, then fill the next one, skip the next one, fill the next one, and then fill the one on the end. Next, you're gonna add the food coloring into the glasses of water. You're gonna add red food coloring into each of the glasses on the ends. I added five drops to each glass. Yellow food coloring will go into this next glass. And blue food coloring in this last glass. Now you'll take your paper towels that you folded earlier and you're gonna place one end in a glass with water and one end into an gla empty glass. Do this with all six of your paper towels. You'll notice if you look closely enough, the water is already moving against the force of gravity up this paper towel. The reason for this is a property called adhesion. Adhesion is water molecules attraction to other substances. So this is water sticking to other things besides water. In activity number four, when I poured the water from one glass to the other and it attracted to the string, this was an example of adhesion. The water was sticking to the string, which allowed it to flow against the force of gravity. In this activity, you could leave this for a couple days and you'll be able to see more dramatic results. The water is gonna to continue to travel up the paper towel and into the glasses that are empty, creating a full rainbow. Have you ever wondered how water can get from the ground to the top of a tall tree? This is because of capillary action. The water moves through the roots and through the trunk of the tree because the water is able to stick to other molecules in the tree because of adhesion. Another really cool example of capillary action is a lizard that lives in Australia and it uses its feet to drink. It uses capillary action to transport the water that it steps on in the sand to its mouth. Now I'm going to show you how to do the activity that I did at the beginning of the video. This is activity number six. For this activity, you'll need a glass or a cup, a lid, or you can use a piece of paper. You'll need mesh. If you don't have mesh, you can also you cut a piece of pantyhose. You can cut a t-shirt. I used a mason jar so I could put the lid on, but you can also just use a rubber band to tie the piece of pantyhose, the t-shirt or the mesh to the jar. You want it to be tied as tight as possible. And you'll need water. Yeah. Remember how we talked about surface tension? Well, in this activity, 
the water is absorbed by the mesh or the material that you use on the top of the glass. When you flip the jar over, the other water molecules in the glass form bonds with the water that's already absorbed. Even though there are holes in the material, the bonds are strong enough to keep the water in the glass. So what causes this attraction between water molecules and water molecules attraction to other things? Let's think about what makes up a water molecule. We know that the chemical formula for water is H2O. This means that there are two hydrogens and one oxygen in a water molecule. Now the oxygen atom wants to pull the electrons towards itself, which makes the oxygen side of a water molecule slightly more negative. The hydrogen side is gonna be left with the protons closest to the outside, and we know protons carry a positive charge. So the hydrogen side of a water molecule is gonna be slightly positive. This is what we call a polar molecule. It has poles. The negative side of one water molecule is attracted to the positive hydrogen side of another molecule. This is what causes those properties of cohesion and adhesion that we've learned about today. I hope that you will take these activities that I've shown you today and show your friends and families and tell them the science behind it all. I also hope that you'll share your results with your teacher. See if you can find some examples of cohesion and adhesion in your everyday life. If you go to the link on the screen, then you'll find copies of all of the activities that I've shown you today and some questions that can help you investigate these properties further.